Now, I don't want to name any names. But we all know that there are certain characters in Tekken 7 with some cheap online setups. To be able to deal with these, you're going to have to be a defensive master. Today is the last day that your lack of knowledge with a little sprinkling of online lag will be your downfall. Welcome to the 5 ultimate scrub killers and how to beat them. If you find yourself standing around at range versus a Horang player, there's only one thing you're going to see, and it's forward forward four. A long range mid knockdown tool that's safe with pushback on block and leaves him in his right foot forward stance. It's reasonable to think that you should be able to take your turn after blocking this, and you can, but you're going to have to be smart about it because by far the most common follow up is backlash or man's leg. Or if you want to be nerdy about it, RFF, free Attila 4. Ooh. Easily one of the most frustrating moves in the entire game to get hit by, Backlash is an armoured homing launcher, which does quite literally a thousand billion damage and is plus 10 million on block. Essentially, if you're swinging after this move and you're not doing so smartly, the Whoring player is going to get six times the damage you just did to him, and he's going to carry you all the way to the wall. Now, we'll go over in a minute how to beat Backlash itself, but most importantly is how to not find yourself in this situation in the first place. Horang's forward forward four may cover a lot of ground, but it is extremely linear. If you're actively sidestepping and side walking a lot in the mid to long range versus him, you're going to make it whiff and you can even find his back for huge damage. Now, let's break down the properties of Backlash itself and how you can counter them. First off, as a 27 frame higher, it's absolutely possible to react and duck. The only issue is that Backlash recovers incredibly fast on whiff. Even with a 13 frame while standing launcher, you can see that I wasn't fast enough here. It's slow enough that you can even activate the armor frames with a fast recovering move and still have time to duck. But once again, the punish is still going to be difficult for you. If your character has a fast reversal that works on kicks, you could react in time to actually parry it. But for most characters, this is for style points only. You can take advantage, however, of generic armor move weaknesses. That being that throws are totally guaranteed. And lows will not only break the armor, but they will obviously have counter hit properties. So once again, as a hard read, Fast, high crushing lows with counter hit properties are going to give you a lot of reward if they do the backlash. You can also activate the armor frames with a string and if that string has a low in it, you're going to get the full damage from the string and cancel the armor. If the low in that string also gives something guaranteed on counter hit, you're going to start racking up some serious damage. Some of the strings in this game seem almost designed just to beat backlash specifically. So if you're totally sure they're going to backlash, there really are ways for you to totally mess them up for doing this. But on a soft read, you really can also just backdash or sidestep, and if backlash comes, you can react to it, and if it doesn't, you're just back to neutral. And there's nothing really wrong with that. Josie standing free is a 13 frame mid with good range. Free free is a mid high and it's natural on counter hit. It does a good amount of damage, it knocks down or wall splats. However on block or even on normal hit, the high does not jail, so you can duck and launch it. Josie doesn't have great ways to make you not want to do this because her mid mix up is free too which only knocks down on counter hit, doesn't do much on normal hit, and is even punishable on block. Ideally, blocking free free shouldn't be a problem for you in the first place. Josie's down forward two is easily one of the most effective in the game. It launches crouchers, it has way above average range, it has good tracking, we'll get onto that in a minute, and it also has a seriously evasive hitbox. 
After her 3-3 free free on block, which is only minus one, Josie's down 4-2 consistently goes under bad hitbox highs. The most common of these are jabs and magic falls. It isn't even a true high crush. You can throw out a lot of other highs with slightly better hitboxes and you'll still catch them every time. If a Josie player is using this flowchart on you, they are specifically expecting you to throw out a jab or a magic four or another bad hitbox high. You can use generic check tools like a down forward one or a down four. Or if you're making a hard read on the down forward two coming, a fast mid counter hit move is perfect. Keep in mind that Josie is only minus one in this situation, so she has plenty good options of her own to beat your choices. You could always just chill out down forward 2 is minus 13 on block. And stepping is another really good option, but you want to make sure that you're stepping to the left and not to the right, because her down forward 2 tracks really well in this direction. With very low risk and potentially huge reward in a launch, stepping left is probably the best overall option in this scenario. But really, the main thing to take away from this is to just not throw out a jab or a magic 4. To recap, duck free free if you can, and if you don't, do anything other than stepping to the right or throwing out a bad hitbox high, like a jab or magic fall. This one is a pretty easy to explain and terrible frame trap. I have no idea why it's so popular. 4-4 four, four is plus 3 on block, and while standing 1 plus 2 is a 12 frame mid. If you press a button of any description, it's gonna hit you. But the risk reward on this is terrible. It's launch punishable on block, though you will have to check which of your 15 frame launchers have enough range to reach. Once again, you can take what is just a pretty smart option in general when you're at minus three or so and take a sidestep. If they go for the stupid while standing one plus two, it's going to whiff and you can launch them anyway. Oh yeah, and four four is floatable. If they're consistently going for this against you, you can pick them up with a jab and get some decent damage and great wall carry for a punish. Be aware that if you're just throwing out a jab after seeing their standing four, this can happen to you. It's only bad Dragunov players that are going to do while standing 1 plus 2 after 4-4 four, four on block rather than just while standing 4, which is better in every way. Just be aware of how easy it is to deal with. Just look at this guy's face. Of course you should trust him not to do a bunch of cheap online gimmicks. Oh wait. Every low level pool player loves to throw out a trooper roll into a while standing 3-2. Why? Because they don't have to think. After trooper roll, if it hits, while standing 3-2 picks up for the combo. And if you block forward forward 4, well, the situation you're left in is kind of hazy and in some situations while standing 3-2 is going to win for them. The frames on a blocked forward forward 4 are all over the place depending on where you blocked it. Late into the animation, forward forward 4 is plus on block and while standing 3 can be a frame trap, but earlier on in the animation, it's minus enough that you can definitely check him with fast tools. Pause while standing 3 is a 13 frame mid, while standing 3 2 is natural, and the second hit is a counter hit launcher, which with pull, as you know, means that you're basically in 2 billion damage. However, very similarly to Josie's free free earlier, it's a mid high that doesn't jail on block. You can duck and launch it if you're sharp. When the forward forward four is blocked deep, while standing free can also be stepped to the left. If you're aware that the while standing free two might be coming after the trooper roll, you'll do just fine. And if you think the trooper roll might be coming in the neutral, it's very linear. Make sure to actively sidestep and sidewalk. We're now all nearly graduated from online scrub school, but the final boss is here. Martial law and the two most popular down two free setups. Let's kill it forever. Raise your hands everyone who's ever had this happen to you from either of these two strings. These two down two free setups 
work by combining some of the factors from the other setups we've seen in this video. And it is most deadly against people who default to throwing out a jab after blocking a string. Like most down twos, Laws is an 11 frame special mid that crushes highs in just 4 frames. Down 2 3 is only natural on counter hit, but it's a full big damage launcher. It's incredibly fast for a high crushing mid counter hit launcher, but it is riddled with flaws. Let's go into them. First, if you just choose to block, down 2 3 is minus 15. So the vast majority of the cast can get a full launch punish. As with all special mids, it's treated like a low that can be crushed by hot kicks. And as a down jab, it can also be treated as a low and be low parried. You should be starting to see just how many options beat out down to free and how you really have to do something specifically stupid to get hit by it. Oh look, and it's incredibly linear too. You should also remember that the string is only natural on counter hit, even if you get hit by the first. On normal hit you can still block and launch him. Laws down to free should be viewed as a high risk, high reward panic move, but as a setup it's terrible and there are so many ways for you to blow them up for attempting it. Let's take a very quick look at the two popular strings that people use to set up their down to free and how they differ. The first is one, two, three. This is a high, high mid that's minus six on block. After this option, mid checks or mid counter hits, it's really only throwing out a high that's gonna get you in trouble with this one. The other one is back to one. The advantage of this one being that it's only minus one on block and he's throwing out a 11 frame special mid so it can also beat your fast mids. And the disadvantage is obviously that it's a mid high that doesn't jail so it can be ducked and launched. All of the options I mentioned before for beating down to free specifically work on both. And there you have it guys my top five ultimate popular scrub killing cheap flowcharty things that you'll see online. My main goal when I made this video was to honestly just to make playing Tekken a bit more fun. Being able to counter these is going to make it so that you're playing real Tekken and not just dying to stuff because you didn't quite understand how to beat it. Please like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, I'll be making plenty more like this for Tekken 7 and Soul Calibur 6 and I also now have a Twitter so feel free to follow me, I'll put the link in the description. See you all soon, guys.